so. We've heard from the US, Great Britain, Singapore, now we're local. But I, I do feel connected to all three. Uh, I lived in Cheltenham, England when I was a kid. I planned to visit Singapore, it's a lovely country. And before this morning, I had planned to fill out my census data, but I might not. <laughs> um, so California, water is a critical asset. Um, I've got a number of good friends in the audience, Al, Laura, Tony, Brent. Um, and so at the local agency, uh, Santa Margarita is a, we would refer to in California as a mid-sized agency. It means we're very small. You know, we're, we serve under 200,000 people. Uh, pretty soon we'll be about a quarter million, but you know, small region. Um, I'll give you a quick background in terms of who we are and then in the context of what we're doing. So GIS, um, I did not grow up with GIS. It's a tool. It's a tool that allows us to do a lot of wonderful things. And so in Jack's presentation in the morning, he talked about this interaction of data. So we as an agency were well behind the times. We have a financial system that I inherited two years ago was put in 26 years ago in a rush. So it's a little bit of a black box. How do I make decisions, get information out of that system, and how do I do it in an effective manner? So I'll talk about our mission and how we're using these techn different technologies to actually help us achieve that mission. You know, so we have four treatment plants, 1,500 miles of pipe, et cetera. But one of the critical things being in California is water is a scarce resource. And we import water from Northern California and from the Colorado. So we're located equidistance between LA and San Diego, about 100 square mile service area, so not that large. But we are in the process of taking over the utilities of San Juan Capistrano. And anyone in here that has, uh, is in the water industry, San Juan Capistrano is pretty famous in California for being sued over their water rates. And they lost. And they gave back a lot of money. So the city approached us a couple years ago and said, hey, we're, we outsource most of our activities. We think you could do, do things more efficiently than us. Would you be willing to take us over? And so we're in the final throes of that process. When I first did the analysis from a financial perspective, say, can we really achieve these so-called efficiencies on a $25 million budget? Right away, I found $4 million of efficiencies. And then I questioned all my calcs and said, well, that, could that possibly be correct? And I think it is. And GIS and the interaction of data will really help us get there. So I'll be brief, but I want to talk about us as an organization and really talk about what, you know, how this information ties back in. Uh, Susie was kind enough to, ho to host a workshop at the district, and we had a bunch of local folks come in, uh, GIS folks come in, and a couple were new to water, and you could hear that nervousness and said, oh, you know, it's easy. And I just told this joke. It's like, water is, you know, all the things we deal with in life, this is not the hard one. There's only two axioms of civil engineering. You can't push on a rope and water flows downhill. It's no problem. <laughs> so... One of the things that we're really looking for is cost containment. You know, operating util a utility is an expensive venture. We're obviously capital intensive, um, but we also are dealing with increased regulations. So we have to take on these additional regulations while trying to explain to the customer, oh, sorry, your bill's going up. So we need to do everything we can to contain cost. Availability of, and cost of imported water. I'm gonna talk about this in a second. This is critical to what we do. We're at the end of the pipe. We import water from the Colorado. Some people say we steal it. We import water from Northern California. Other people say we steal it. And you know, that availability of water is really fundamental. As we talked about earlier, there have been a couple earthquakes. What happens if one of those earthquakes disrupts the pipe? What if we can't get water into our service area? What do we do? And I'll talk about that in the sense of developing localized supplies. So that's a big cost requirement, so we better find some savings on the other side. You know, ongoing capital repairs and replacements. We want to be proactive. We don't want to be, you know, your Detroit. We don't want to be those cities on the East Coast that are just so far behind because their infrastructure, in all fairness, is 200 years old. Can we maintain over time? And can we be customer focused? That's paramount for our board. So when we look at our supply, we recycle about 80% of our wastewater. We put it back to, to, back to productive use, 20% local supply in form of recycled water. The rest is imported, so all of our drinking water comes from importing water. 
Where we want to go is getting to 100% wastewater recycling, developing local supplies, and then also relying on imported water, a portfolio approach. So, and also having storage for six months. So in other words, if the pipe breaks, we can still deliver water for that essential usage, cooking, cleaning, showering, et cetera. We like to, as small as we are, we like to consider ourselves innovative. We have the first recreational lake that takes recycled water. And for that, for the state of California, we received the 2019 award. God bless you. Um, we're also building a 5,000 acre foot regional recycled water uh, reservoir, which will serve the region, allow us to meet our peak demands and rely less on imported water. And for non-water geeks in the room, that's about 1.6 billion gallons. So it's a lake, not the biggest lake, but it's still a pretty good lake. So just in terms of maintaining our system, it's about $15 million a year just to repair the pumps, to replace the pipes, et cetera, our treatment plants. And if we make those continual investments, we'll long-term be able to save money. Good asset management. Now, this is where GIS comes into play. So you know, one of the challenges we have is, you know, I wear a suit to work. There's a lot of folks that don't. And they're out there and they have mud up to their shoulders and, and they're like, I just want to turn a wrench. I just want to get my work done. Well, how do we know what they're doing is in the most cost efficient manner? How do we know what they're doing is really targeted where we need it to be? Well, GIS is a critical element. And that was part of the, that was a major driver in our, this idea of implementing new technology. You know, in, I don't have my phone on me, but each, every one of us has a computer in our pocket. So, you know, the same folks that are in the field really not tracking their time, not really knowing where they're doing the work order. What would be pretty neat is we just took the phone and said, this pump, pump number four, click. Track your time. You know where you're working. You know where you should be working. And all of a sudden, as the analyst, as a CFO, I can now look at how we're using information, uh, look at where we're spending our time, and start to right size. You know, cost savings. Anytime we go back out to the public, and my friends here can, can attest, uh, you use less water, but I'm going to raise your rates. And it's a hard message to deliver. So you better be coming with, what are we doing in order to save you money? What are we doing to help improve the system so in case of an emergency, you have those supplies? We installed solar panels, our team, our operators. We have, just by the fact that we can rely on recycled water, Eastern Laura's here, they save so much money by being able to put their, their water, their wastewater back to productive use. And just even just in the technology we have currently today, we save about half a million dollars. Just means people that we're not hiring, but we see that as a significant bogey. We're after increasing that. So let me talk about the enterprise systems and where we're at. So we view GIS as that portal that allows everyone in the district, regardless if it's a general manager to a field operator, to get information. But by being so far behind, it's a blessing, a curse is a blessing. We're able to implement these new systems with a common schema. What that means is that we, those systems, as Jack talked about, the systems talk to each other. All of a sudden, I can look at my financial data. I can look at my water quality data. I can look at my pumping data. I can look at my demands, all in a centralized place. They're talking to each other. And so we just implemented a new financial system as of March. We just implemented a new billing system as of July of last year. And we're in process of implementing GIS. Our SCADA is well in advance of everything else we do. Um, and then our, the, the final one, our customer, or excuse me, our computer maintenance management system is really antiquated. It really doesn't do, do what we need it to do, but what a great opportunity that gives us. So in 2014, my predecessor came in from a different agency and said, wow, we really need to up, up the ante in terms of what we're doing from a technology basis. And so we did a survey, talked to 50 agencies. How are you using GIS? How would you like to be using GIS? How is that interconnected with the rest of your systems? And from there, we started building. And so pulling in the grid maps, CAD files, 
So we can now see our system. You know, we implemented in 2015 a budget-based rate structure. And for those that are on California or central Colorado, what that means is that what you pay for water is tied back to what your property looks like, how big it is, what sort of vegetation. And so those layers that were talked about in the morning. And so that database, that interaction, that budget-based rate structure, we give our customers access to that. So they can see what, they're, what they're, water they're using, what water we think they should be using based on the temperature, what plant cover they have, et cetera. But that allows us to make good decisions. As I talked about earlier, recycled water, we see the benefit of it. We still have 20% you know, of our wastewater that we, we want to recycle. Okay, who's going to use that? You can't just you know, put recycled water anywhere. You have to have certain type of customers. Certain customers that have a high enough demand are located in the right place. Okay, so we have four treatment plants. Well, which one should we upgrade, upgrade in order to have that technology to treat water to the high level? Well, it really, looking at data collaboratively, we can be make better decisions, and we're right in that process. So we're in the process of converting uh, data requirements, and Esri has been a huge help. And the, one of the, the neat things from a local agency is, you know, we, we like to be innovative, but we only have so much knowledge about, we know what we know. And so to have a partner that helps us step back and say, here's the information you have, Here's the information you're going to collect. Here's a plan, plan for implementing that. That's really been invaluable. So we talk about cost savings, asset management. If I can look at my system and say, ah, these are the pipes that I have on the eastern side of the district. These are the pipes I have on the western side of the district. Material, age, et cetera. I don't need to look super granular. I can let the data do that for me. I can link this up, and we're in the process of linking up cost database. So I can actually have a real-time estimation instead of my just accounting system, my CAFR, from a, what would it cost to replace the system today? Where am I seeing breaks in my system? So you know, if there's a couple breaks here or there, I'm not going to worry about it. But all of a sudden, as I get into see a pattern, ah, that becomes a program. I want to put that in my CIP. And so I attack it, and I can predict, project it, and I can right-size my bonding and the timing of spending money. We've even, uh, our head of IT, and I should, I should have started with, I'm not presenting on, my, on my behalf of myself, I'm presenting on three colleagues, Dustin, Pilar, and Nate, head of IT, GIS specialist, and head of conservation, GIS. They're fantastic. To have a team as good as, as they are is just a blessing. But Dustin, our IT guy, said, I could play with a little bit of SQL. I think I can figure this out. And so he's looking at reservoir levels. And, Producing that so we can see it in GIS. What's next? Water quality. Well, we're getting water from different locations. It's going to differ based on where it's imported from. As we have more localized supply, it's going to differ. And so can I make better decisions, operational, real-time decisions, connect that to my SCADA system based on seeing how this information interacts? Water use efficiency. We are in, we are in the desert. And uh, some of our customers don't realize that, but we are in the desert. <laughs> and so, you know, can we look at who's using water and where? Is there housing stock? What we can clearly see is that older housing stock compared to new stock, whether density or just more efficient uh, efficiencies, or even mindset, it does affect where we're seeing those demands occur, which then impacts where we're our operational questions where we're shipping water to, how much we need to put in our reservoirs, how we optimize those costs from storage, you know, electricity, demand costs, et cetera. So what's next? Where are we headed? So I, I came from the private side. I was a consultant, and I had the great pleasure of working with 200 agencies over the course of my career. And one of the, I'm an analyst at heart, and so I've got to re remember to stay at the high level now. Um, but what we want to have is a dashboard that allows us to see this interacting, interaction of information. And for my operational dashboard, what's coming in my work order system? Where are the folks, where are they spending their time in the field? As I said, we're taking over this new system. Well, if we're going to get those efficiencies, we really need to be able to right-size where people are spending their time. Um, what about water production, demand data, how that interacts? From the CIP, 
We want to be able to see on a map and communicate to the public, which we have on our website, hey, we're going to be building an inner street, FYI, next week. Here's the, t here's the outage. Here's what you need to know. Um, you know. Water supplies, wastewater versus water CIPs. Because at the end of the day, the customer just says, isn't, they don't say, what's my wastewater bill? What's my water bill? What's my recycled water bill? What's my bill? And so being able to optimize when we're spending money and how we're spending money, are we able to look at it as one holistic system? And then finally, financial dashboards, my pro forma. I need to go out and issue debt. I need to have certain money that's available. Bond map, O&M forecast. And so this is things that we did historically in a whole bunch of different systems, whether Optimatics, whether ExtendSim. We used to be, you know, every good idea in this industry has a half-life of six months, if that anymore. And so we were always cutting edge, trying to think of the next best thing. Well, the really neat thing about GIS, it allows us to look at everything collectively and build on it. So the next step is to have an analytical system that sits on top. We've migrated all of our data to a database. It's updated once a day. Now we can do analysis based on that. And so one of the neat things, and I left it in the presentation, my G head of GIS, he said, excited about insights. And we're really excited about insights. There's the systems that we use otherwise have real horsepower, but insights basically allows us to do what these other systems did. That becomes a really powerful tool. So we're excited about where, where we're going as, a, as an agency and as an industry. With that, thank you.